Hello, I'm Professor Simon Hazlitt and I'm here on the north coast of Penang Island in Malaysia uh, facing out to the north to the Straits of Malacca and then into the Andaman Sea and of course the Indian Ocean beyond. Now in 2004 on the 26th of December the Indian Ocean suffered a, uh, a huge tsunami that affected the coast right around the Indian Ocean. Now that uh, tsunami was triggered by an earthquake offshore Sumatra, uh, the island in Indonesia. Now that earthquake generated a tsunami that was up to 30 meters high in Banda Aceh. It reached the shores of India and Sri Lanka of heights of around 10 meters and similarly in Thailand. Now the coast of Malaysia which from this point runs northwards up to Thailand, received uh, lower waves because it is to some extent sheltered by Indonesia, uh, the island of Sumatra uh, to the west, and the earthquake was on the other side of the island. So the tsunami actually had to refract around Sumatra and come down through uh, into the Straits of Malacca from the Andaman Sea direction to the north. Now, Clearly, uh, we know that that tsunami claimed the lives of nearly a quarter of a million people. Now, those uh, fatalities were mainly in Indonesia, uh, in India, and in Thailand. And thankfully, Malaysia escaped somewhat from the, the fatalities. Unfortunately, it still uh, suffered over 60 fatalities, and 50 of them, at least, were here in the island of Penang. And a number of those uh, fatalities occurred here on this beach, uh, Miami Beach, here in the, the, the township of Batu Feringi, not far from Georgetown, which is to the east of here. Now, in terms of the fatalities that were caused on this beach, it is thought, it was initially thought, that the, the rocky nature of this beach, and in particular, the, the access off the beach, was the main reason for the fatalities. And as you can see behind me here, there is quite a steep wall, uh, which is a coastal defense from, uh, to stop the cliffs eroding behind. Um, and as you can see, it pans along. But there are occasional stairways. Perhaps we'll go and have a look at this one over here. And these stairways offer a way off the beach, an evacuation route, if you like. Now, that was thought to be one of the reasons why there were deaths on this beach, because people found it difficult to get up and over onto the road and out of harm's way. Now, the, the wave that, a, that hit this beach is thought to be in the region of three to four meters high. So, in fact, although it did, we, did, we think it did, it did arrive at about 1.30 in the afternoon, on the 26th of December 2004, when the tide was roughly at its high tide level, it did mean that the wave was able to get over the, the roads uh, in many places along this coastline. And to the east here in Georgetown, a place called Gurney Drive, it covered the, uh, the walkways there with, with mud and sand. So it's about a three to four meter high wave, which is, if you're on the beach, that's certainly uh, very, very dangerous. Now, although this uh, embankment and the walls behind is thought to have been perhaps a reason uh, why there were deaths on this beach. Uh, it subsequently uh, 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 came to light after the event from eyewitnesses that came forward to say that they saw the people who were using this beach, the tourists, the beach users from the hotels uh, behind, uh, they actually went down to the sea. People saw them go down to the sea Chasing fish is one of the quotes. Um, as the tide, as the water receded, as the tsunami approached, because generally before any tsunami, the wave, uh, the water level drops uh, as uh, to, a, to, to unusually low levels before the crest of the tsunami arrives. And we think that's what happened here. The water levels dropped, 
that tourists, rather than evacuating the beach and fleeing uh, the risk, they actually went down to, into the area that was uh, left dry to look at fish. And of course, once they, once they committed themselves to doing that, they would not outrun the tsunami when it actually arrived at the beach. So those people, unfortunately, perhaps died not because of the difficult access off the beach, but, be, but because of a lack of education. That when, when you see the sea recede, you should retreat, because that normally heralds a tsunami uh, coming in. Now, in 2005, uh, the Department for Irrigation and Drainage, who are in Malaysia responsible for coastal protection, did issue a report to say that hotels, beach resorts, should put up ample warning of tsunami hazards in areas affected by that 2004 tsunami. Now, the types of information that would be needed in terms of educating the public that might be using the beach are things like uh, the telltale signs of the water receding and once that happens to, to evacuate the beach. Or if you feel an earth tremor at the, at the coast, this again, once again, to evacuate the beach and to get to higher, higher ground. Now, I've had a quick look along the seafront here on Miami Beach and also at some of the information boards of the hotels behind. And on none of them do I see the word tsunami. Uh, there is a lifeguard station up there which warns people about high surf and how, can, how that can um, uh, be, a, be of risk to beach users. But nowhere are tsunami mentioned. Nowhere is the sign of a retreating waterline mentioned as a risk, as, as, a, as a signature for an approaching tsunami. So if, the tsunami, if a tsunami was to happen again uh, here in the future, it might be that the public using this beach would not, uh, still not be educated to the signs of a tsunami approaching and may do exactly the same. They may go down to the water as it recedes to look at the fish that are um, exposed. Now, one would hope, with all the media attention since the 2004 tsunami, and indeed since the uh, 2011 Japan tsunami, that the public are much more aware of tsunami risks and would react appropriately. But it is a little bit disappointing for me to come to a place like this where I know people have lost their lives to tsunami, still not to find sufficient information warning the public about uh, the signatures, the telltale signs of a tsunami, so that we may better help prevent the loss of life.